On this edition of Read with Ronald, I collaborated with my friend Tati Simone to read four books for her Days of Slay series. On this episode, we will be talking about Men Cry in the Dark. First published in 1997, Michael Basden's Men Cry in the Dark tells the story of four black men from Chicago, Derek, Mark, Tony, and Ben, as they navigate life and romantic relationships in their mid-30s. Men Cry in the Dark was Basden's second book, published through his publishing company, then named Legacy Publishing. It sold over 30,000 hard copies within the first six months of publication and was also adapted into a stage play by Jacarius Johnson in 2003. Baisden stated his goal with this book was to challenge the narrative that men don't read and fill a void of lack of black novels written by men at the time. All right, so today is November 29th. Me and Tati are doing this collaboration we're doing this collaboration where we recommend books to each other and we read them and then we're going to talk about them. Right now I'm on my way to the radio station to do what I do every day, Monday through Thursday. I recommend it to her. This book called Men Cry in the Dark and I got Men Cry in the Dark yesterday in the mail because I haven't read it either. I was just looking for a book <laughs> to recommend that wasn't about trauma because I was trying to put on for black men. So. That's the book I got. And apparently it's waiting to exhale for men. That's apparently what it is. So basically I have about two weeks to read all four of these books because I've only read one of them and that's Sula. So that's what I'm doing. So pray for me. I'm one fourteen pages into Men Cry in the Dark by Michael Basin. This is looking like a three star read. I'm hoping it can become a four star read. But my main issue with this book is that the story is about four men, but we've only got two of the men's perspectives. And one of the men's perspective is being presented through the eyes of his fiance. And I'm just like, I want his perspective, not his fiance. He's like, it's looking like a three star, but I'm hoping it can become a four star. That's all I'm saying. It's November 30th. Um, I'm halfway through men crying in the dark. And um, I don't think it's going to get any better than a three. I honestly don't. I don't think it's going to get any better than a three because <laughs> I'm halfway through and I, we still haven't gotten like two of the dude's perspectives. Like one of them has gotten like two seconds worth of screen time in the book and the other has gotten nothing. We've gotten everything through his girlfriend or his fiance and I'm just like, uh, when are we gonna hear from him? Isn't he one of the men that are crying in the dark? When are we gonna hear from him? One of the titular men that's supposed to be crying in the dark. But honestly, I, this book so far is sitting at a three for me. And um, I don't see it going above a three. I don't see it going above a three. I'm just gonna be honest. It's December 1st. 200 pages in to Men Cry in the Dark, so getting close to the end. I've got a, a little over 100 pages, got about 130 pages left in the book. I'm trying to keep my rants, I'm trying to keep my ranting and raving to a minimum so I can just save it all for the discussion. But I just need to say this we 200 pages in, and we just got a chapter focused on Ben. Like, fully focused on him. There was, like, a little section from his perspective. That, that, that didn't count. That doesn't count as a full chapter. But what I'm saying is, we are 200 plus pages in. We still ain't got no point of view from Tony. You know, when, when I was going into this book, I was kind of hoping we was going to hear from the men that cry in the dark and so far only two of the men have cried in the dark it was mark and derek and let me just say this i'm tired of derek we done got more perspective from derek than from the other men like the the distribution of of story is just so uneven it makes no sense so far it's it's, it's a three i don't see it getting a four i don't see it getting to a four it's a three at best is a three at best.
we are on page 211. The chapter is titled The Cedric Situation. And guess whose perspective we are finally getting? We're finally getting Tony's perspective. Page 211, The Cedric Situation. We finally get Tony's perspective. I don't think y'all understand. Tony's perspective should have been within the first four chapters, not over halfway through the book. You know, I'm a cherish this because this might actually be the only chapter we get from his point of view instead of through Tracy. So I can officially say now, we have officially gotten perspectives from all four men. It's a miracle. I'm gonna just say this because it don't make no sense that Derek gets to narrate like half the book. Meanwhile, Mark got like two chapters. Ben got a chapter and a half. Well, actually, no, a chapter and like a, a fifth, a chapter and a fifth. And Tony gets, I don't even know if this is a full chapter based on him or if it's just part of the chapter, but it's ridiculous. It don't make no sense. It don't make no sense. I'm getting close to the end of Men Don't Cry in the Dark. Uh, I, was, I, was trying to let, I was trying to let Michael make it, but you know what? He gonna have to get a 2.5 from me on this. My number one issue with this book is the, is the perspectives. Like, the way it's written is just so disappointing because I was really hopeful for it and it just it disappointed me. I don't mind, I don't mind it having uneven points of view because I've done that before in my books. I don't even mind that we get an additional points of view aside from the four men we're supposed to be hearing from because I've done that before too without us being told because I've done that before too. My main issue, my main issue with this book and the perspectives of it is that we should have heard from the four men that are supposed to be crying in the dark first before we heard from their girlfriends, fiance, everybody else. We should have heard from them first. And the fact that the only man we really, really hear from is Derek. Meanwhile, Ben got a shared chapters with Mark and Derek and Tony. We don't even hear from Tony until about 200 pages in. What the heck? <laughs> the fact that we didn't hear from Tony until 200 pages in is crazy to me because he's supposed to be one of the men that's crying in the dark. <laughs> but I'm just really just stuck on the fact that this man, we didn't hear from Tony until page 211. So why aren't we hearing from him until 200 pages in? That don't make sense to me. That don't make sense to me. It don't make sense to me, and you know what? I'm tired of hearing about Derek. <laughs> I'm tired of hearing from Derek's perspective. We, we didn't, he, he didn't narrate more than half this darn book. I'm like, it's supposed to be four of y'all. Why are we hearing mostly from this one? I was really hopeful for this book because I searched out this book. I was literally searching for a book that was about black men that was not traumatic. <laughs> I wanted a book about black men written by a black man that did not involve trauma as the main plot point. And so I was really trying to let Michael make it off the strength of that. I, I tried. <laughs> I really did. I really did. Then I spoiled myself accidentally on some of the plot points while reading reviews. And the fact that there was other black men in the reviews expressing their disappointment. No, this book is, this book is a 2.5. It's a 2.5. <laughs> Hopefully it don't drop down to a one, but I still got over a hundred, I still got a little over a hundred pages left, so we'll see. I was trying to let Michael make it, but he, he, he failed me. He failed me. I was trying to let him make it and he failed me. I'm within the last hundred pages of Men Cry in the Dark. And um, starting with the wedding chapter, this book seems to have gone into the we're on deadline so we need to wrap it up so like let's write out the main plot the bare minimum that's that's what the final chapters are seeming like and it's huge gaping holes in the story now there are events taking place and there are huge leaps in logic that are not making sense because we haven't seen them take place in the book characters and their characterizations are not making sense. Derek is sitting up here going off on Angela for not being there for the longest time, but it's like, but you just walked with her in the wedding. So like, what the heck? The characterizations are no longer making sense. It's just not making sense. And then the big moments in the story, disappointing. They're disappointing. Rush through, disappointing, don't make sense. 
And what the heck is Ben's big moment supposed to be? Like, Derek had selling the magazine to Mr. Starks. Tony had his wedding. Mark had trying to make it work with Christie's parents. And what does Ben have? What does Ben have? Is Ben's big moment supposed to be finally getting to get in bed with Nikki? Like, seriously? This book is a two. This book is a two. That's what this is. It went from a three to a two. I could have gave it a strong three. But some of the storytelling choices have dropped it down to a two. I finished Men Crying in the Dark. And it, gets, it got a two. It got a two. The ending was, um, it was a hot mess. Um, I didn't like it. Per se, I'm glad that it didn't turn into no second chance. We had to talk about men crying in the dark first. That listen. So we we both picked two books, right? We both picked a book. First, he gave me Sula, and then I think I gave you friends. And did I give you friends and lovers first, or did yeah, I give you gave me friends and lovers and everything I never told you? And I gave you Sula and men cry in the dark. Okay, because we were gonna do just one, but he wanted to put on for the black men. He said. You know what? book was Look, let me just let me just let me just explain it to y'all <laughs> i was sitting here searching high and low mm -hmm. trying to find a book to put off for black men that was not about trauma mm -hmm. and so we got this we got this book right here because they was all like oh it's waiting to exhale for men right and i'm like well i saw the movie i ain't read the book but i heard the movie was like the book so i know i committed a sin but still <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, so yeah, that's that's how we got this. That's how we got to here. So okay, yeah. it started off as a strong three, and I'm gonna tell you exact the exact point. He got it too. Just know we going all into the book. We're going all into it. So if you haven't read it, just um, you know, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I y'all, y'all. This book is a zero. <laughs> it's a zero out of five for me. This book is a zero out of five for me. And Ronald knows I wanted to like this book so bad. When he was like, it got a two, I'm like, nah, it can't be that bad. He gonna, it's not gonna be that bad. It's not. So I'm really Look, trying to sit there. I was I, rooting for this book. I wanted this book to win. I, and I did too. And I'm like, we off to. We off to a shaky start, but you know, it's the times, it's the 90s. It's, let me see where this goes. Is it satire? What's going on? Y'all, this book, it's, I think what upsets me the, the most about this book is what it could have been. Like, it has some That's points where it was like, this book is getting good. Like, it, it has some points where it flew, it, like everything flowed. And then it's like, he just didn't know how to, mesh it together even for the times we know like okay the times things are different they're gonna have different things they say all of that but this book what it could have been and what it was zero and y'all if y'all don't know i'm not a hard critic i'm not with somebody who go into like details but i think he just upset me so bad that i was just like i can't i can't i can't mm -mm. Ron, you go ahead and tell your little spill that we can get it. 
Go ahead, tell your story. We can get you know what? I'm going to tell you what my first issue was with this book. This book, the summary, I barely read the summary, but this book tells us this story is about Derek, Tony, Mark, and Ben, right? So I'm expecting to read from the perspectives of Derek, Mark, Tony, and Ben. So when we open the book, it's like, it's like, okay, chapter one is Derek. I'm like, okay, chapter two is Derek. I'm like, all right. Chapter three is Tracy. I'm like, who is Tracy? That was that was the moment Michael earned that three. I was like, oh, you didn't even commit to what she was supposed to do in the first place. I it, he read the summary. I didn't read the summary of either book. He books. told me. I just was like, I'm gonna read them. So I didn't read no reviews, the summary, nothing. I read like the first sentence. I was like, okay, let's go. I've never read this book, but we're gonna do it together. So we gonna start from the beginning. My notes. So oh, you can start with your notes. I'm a, my first note was whose perspective is whose. When we start reading this book, I was like, whose head am I in? Like, who am I reading about? I don't even I don't even know what page it was when we finally find out, but it was like, whose perspective is whose? What's going on here? For me, is that did you have that problem too? For me, I think I knew it was. I didn't know the name, but I knew it was a man at the beginning. Because for me, I was just flowing. I was just trying to, because I didn't know anything. I didn't know it was a Derek. I didn't know who was who. So I was just like, let me read this book. I was like, my first note say, I have hope. But let's see. I'm going to live text this as if I was texting Ronald. So my friend, (laughs) after that, my other note was, we off to a good slash interesting start. It's the typical, you know, mindset, especially for the 90s. Um, and I was like, I've read some version of the radio segment a few times. Mm-hmm. Like, if you read books, it's like you didn't read that a few times, especially from there. And I was like, I wonder if this is, if this is a satire of like man's thoughts or really how he thinks. I just want to say about that radio segment. That radio segment got on my nerves because you know I work in radio, right? <laughs> yes. Ain't no way. I don't know if this is how they did it in the 90s, but at least at my station, there is no way a guest is just going to come in and we're going to be like, oh, the guest we had scheduled didn't show up, but we're going to throw you on the air in, in their place. Like, that's not how that work. Like, first of all, you got to sign a whole contract to get on the air. We got to know what you're talking about because there's certain things you can't say, certain things you can't talk about. So I'm like, this is like... I'm I'm like, I don't know if this was his real life experience of being in the radio, but that's not usually how this works. Either it's real, real unprofessional, or somebody ain't do their research. We were comp majors, by the way, too. So maybe that's the perspective that, that this is coming from. But yeah, it was not. Dude, I was a comp major and an English minor, so you know I got some stuff to say. Listen, that's the difference. I write, but my I have more of a mindset of like just reading. I don't really think of like technical like things. I'm not into like writing, not into writing, but I just try not to just, I don't really analyze, analyze all the time. Listen, we got the king right here. So he got his. As you see, I write. He write for real. He write for real. <laughs> like my little short stories, my little screenplays. No, Ron will be writing. Get his book, shameless plug. <laughs> So Shameless next- plug, but you know what? While we on the radio segment, you know that's when uh that's when Miss Westside she first called in, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm like, ooh, is this gonna be like a mystery? Like, does he know who she is? And it's like some a girl he didn't uh, cheated on or something, and that's why she asking all these questions because the segment was about why do men cheat? Mm-hmm. Which, if you didn't know, Michael wrote a book called Why Men Cheat. Not that big. So I feel like. Not that I feel like that was a plug, kind of like to go get my other book, you know, so we can explain what people have been asking since probably since the beginning of time. That's why I said it was like a really worn out subject. But again, it's a still a worn out subject. So I was like, I'm gonna let it slide. That's always been the topic of this, some type of man thing. And then it didn't. What helped, though, is that his magazine was about relationships. So it's like, I see, I see. And I was happy about that because, you know, I like reading books where like black people are just 
people like they're just doing stuff random jobs mm -hmm. you a banker here you work in technology you this like it's it's not the it's not the struggle bus all the time so and that's why i wanted this book to win because it's about successful black men all of them run a business oh it was it miss when we get into this i'm a, it was all the keys for success it had everything and it just it failed <laughs> my next note was um that's when we got Tracy. And I was like, why are we hearing from Tracy and not Tony about his relationship? I wouldn't have, I didn't mind hearing from Tracy, but I'm like, we should have heard from Tony first because this is called Men Cry in the Dark. I want to know about the man that's supposed to be crying in the dark. Not, not, I don't want to learn about him from his fiance first. <laughs> I want to hear from him first and then we can hear from her. But on page 16, I said, and I got to read, I'm like, some of these I got to read verbatim. I was like, I really don't need this book at all. I understand it was written by men, but like, I understand it was written by men for men, but come on now. And then I was like, you know what? I'm going to just be objective because I feel like everything is bothering me. Everything is bothering me. So from there, when you were like, switch, when you were like, Tracy came my note was like, switch it to a woman's perspective. That's a bold move. Like, that's a very bold move for me. I'm like, oh, he really, you being adventurous. Because like you He said, was being adventurous. Dark. And when I read the man's part, I'm like, Derek is a typical man. Like, that's written like a, not even like a, the macho man. So how are you going to go from the macho man to a woman? And... Like I said, we should have heard from the men first. We should have the first four chapters should have been them first four men hearing from hearing each of their stories from them. And honestly, I heard more from Tracy than I did Tony. I heard way more from Tracy, and it's like her point of view was just. I really was like, do I hate men? Like, I, I the baby mama thing was just doing too much for me, and I'm like, but. It, it gave me his stance, but like, why Why was all of that even happening? And I think how you said, it would have been much more meaningful if it was from Tony's perspective because it could have made sense of man crying in the dark. Like, she's ruining my relationship. She's doing X, Y, and Z. I don't know why you we know have what? to meet. Her name Valerie, right? Why we have to yeah. meet through Tracy's eyes? My thing with, look, I'm skipping ahead in my notes for a little bit, but my like, my notes was like, where the heck is Tony? <laughs> Because it's like, as I'm reading through this mess, I'm like, okay, so the first chapter is from Tracy's point of view. We get it from Val. We get, you know, she get her little argument with Valerie. I'm like, okay, I get it. You wanted to show their little argument. But then when they start going into how Tracy and Tony met, I'm like, I wanted this to be from Tony's point of view. Because I want to know what Tony saw to make him get with Tracy. I'm like, I would have loved to have seen him trying to scrub that darn paint off his face so he wouldn't look a mess in front of her and all other type of stuff. But no, we getting it all from Tracy. And I'm like, I don't want it from Tracy all the time. I want Tony too. The first half of this book is like that. The first half of this book, you the whole book dang near, you really hear from the, men, the women more than the men, if you want to be honest. The moment we hit Tracy, that's when I went into writer mode. I was no longer a reader. I was the writer reading somebody else's work. From the beginning, I knew this was going to be something because of something of that effect. Somebody asked me about, the first thing I noticed was the writing. And somebody asked me when I went to this book, um, this uh, bookstore, somebody asked me about it. And I was like, he writes how he talks. Like, that's how I had to rationalize it because, yeah, the first thing I noticed, and I'm not, like I told you, I'm not one of them people who, like, it got to be the most tip top. Like, I'm not like that. But the first thing I noticed about this book, there were the two first things. The first thing I noticed was the typical 90s thing and the writing. And I said, I don't. So, you know, like, we just established that at some point we start hearing from the women. So I, I want to know, what was it like? You as a woman, what was it like reading the women's point of view? Did it feel like it sounded like a woman to you? Oh, I had I had that right here. I'm like, when I was like, it's baby mama drama, but I was like, but it, it's a great pick me stance. It's great. It's <laughs> even pick me. It was I, I I don't know why we made the bold move, but yeah, it was giving pick me. It was not giving 
it was like I could see a woman with that mindset for the times, but it was real. It's like, no, it's really giving pick me. Cause why would you even call another woman to talk to her about her child? Why would you even and you know she don't like you? And not only that, it's like you don't it, it was the fakeness for me. You don't even like her. I'm not calling nobody to check on them if I don't like them. I could be cordial. Hi, bye, how you doing? But let me tell you something. Officer, let me um what do you do if a child is constantly walking in on their mom? Because I have to report a crime. I'm not call, I'm not. We trying to get the baby. We trying to get the baby. Y'all keep saying y'all won't. No, I'm skipping ahead. I'm skipping ahead. No, because the woman I want to talk about that just for a little bit because my thing is it's established that Tracy don't like her, but like at some point in the book, it's like Tracy talking about it's one of her times when it's her time to talk. She's like, oh, Valerie told me this and Valerie told me that, and I'm like, when did Valerie tell you this? Because y'all don't like each other. And from my understanding, y'all never liked each other. So when did y'all get, when did y'all have time to have a heart to heart and start sharing details with each other? And Tracy could have been a wonderful woman. And that's the thing too. If we would have heard it from Tony's perspective, because Tracy would have been, I did not need her, Tracy. I did not need her. I, she was just a strong, beautiful, like it was so many great things about her. Especially in Tony's mind, I did not need that. And that did not, like, what she was doing did not back up. It, it gave insecure. It didn't back up anything. And I understand being angry. I understand because things happen, but I just felt like it was given stereotypical. Like, it was very much given stereotypical. A lot of moms that I know be ready to get rid of their children. They be ready. I'm sorry to say it like that. But when you have a kid, a lot of visitation is, if y'all don't know, is every other weekend and 30 days in the summer. You might get every weekend, but it's every other weekend. You switch from Thanksgiving and Christmas and then 30 days in the summer. Is that a real break from a child? That's not a real break. And not only that, Valerie ain't have no substance. It was nothing there that gave me why she acts like this i villains are usually like it didn't like anything about her and tony's relationship like was she cra at least with, with Derek, it was like oh the girl went crazy or something with him it was no like i feel like valerie was gonna be brought up so much i wanted to and, and at least get her point of view so i can get all point of, points of views and to get more of an understanding in her mind because i just felt like one, we've seen it through Tracy's lens, who don't even like her. And then Tony's lens was fine. I didn't mind Tony's lens because that's his woman. That's his baby mama. They have the most in common, but you know, Tracy was one of the most not needed. <laughs> one of the most not needed ones. So, like, my next note is, like, Mark don't love himself. <laughs> and he bring all his problems on himself. I think out of all the men, Mark was my least favorite. He was my least favorite because my issue with Mark was that he was like, oh, I don't date black women because this one girl rejected me in middle school. And then after I got all beefed up in high school, they still didn't want me. I'm like, Mark, maybe it's because your personality is trash. That man said when I didn't look like I owned the store. These educated black women wouldn't talk to me. But when they found out I was a store owner, they would talk to me. You think I got a degree and I'm making 75000 a year in the 90s and I'm going to talk to a janitor? I mean... And then when you do, you get pregnant, what happens? You got pregnant by what? You knew he wasn't going to do you, you knew I mean, let's... Let's let's be real. Whether you like it or not, whether you want to admit it or not, how much somebody makes does factor into the relationship. Because at some point, especially if you want to get married, it's like, okay, if we get married, I want to buy a house. I want to have kids. That stuff costs money. 
and the and people chastise women so much for like picking people who are deadbeats. Like if if she was to pick you and you ran out and what you would be, oh, you always love charity cases. You that's why you're pregnant now. That's why, or that's why he can't take care of you. It's all that hoopla that is like too much. And with Mark too, something I just thought about is how many opportunities we lost to actually see people see men cry in the dark because Derek gave the backstory of Mark, right? He gave the backstory on all of them. He did, but he gave the backstory on Mark about women and about how he used to get bullied and all that type of stuff. But to hear from Mark, like the pain that actually caused him and to sort of realize why his mind was like that, that's what we should have been getting. Instead, sorry. Instead, what we got was, I don't like black women because when we really know why, but it's, I don't like black women because they bougie, they ghetto, they this. Can we not reach into our childhood trauma, go back into our bag and figure out what's really wrong with us? And then what killed me with Mr. Perfect, quote for quote, I said, not this man falling for a girl from a racist family. I thought everything was all perfect, dummy. You, it's perfect, perfect, perfect. It's self help parents don't, like black people, Mr. Perfect, you couldn't bring your people home because they black. Let me tell you where Mark lost me. Mark was all, I don't like black women because they teased me and they ghetto and bougie and they always got an attitude. But the first time we meet Christy, his white girlfriend, what is she doing? She yelling at him. She going off on him saying, oh, how dare you judge me and my racist family? Da, 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 da. I'm like, so you don't want to date black women because they have an attitude. But your white girlfriend, the first time we meet her in the book, she's yelling at you and going off on you. So what's what's really going on, Mark? And it's so comical. That's why my first mindset was like, is this satire? Because this cannot be real. This could not be a real book with real perspectives. We missed so many opportunities. And like when he was eavesdropping on his sister, oh, he was so mad. Did you mad for it? And the part of them sleeping with other, like, other women's husbands. Like, the way that women were written in this story was, like, you never, yeah, you, the only good, you're telling me, out of Chicago, which is a very Black place, from my understanding, there was not one Black woman that you knew that was good, except your, not even your sister, not even your sister is a good Black woman, only your mother. Let's talk about Angela because Angela's not in my notes, but I have some thoughts about Angela. Angela, she the man from Los Equis because she the most interesting woman in the world. She the most interesting woman. This woman is a boxer, can take down grown men, apparently been fighting in the street, owned three gyms, became a gym teacher. Mama was a police officer, tried to put her brother through college. Never told nobody. Went to therapy, but never talked to nobody about it other than her best friend and somehow... Derek. Okay. It was her taking the grown man down for me. But at least they gave it a realistic spin of like, okay, you you did a low blow and then you took him down. But her fighting grown men, and that's not to say women can't fight grown men. That's not what it's about. It's just, I feel like we got a lot of nonsense. We got a lot of nonsense that took us nowhere. Like, I feel like it was a lot of like, Mm. so much and so little with Angela and why are we hearing so much from Angela's perspective I know more about Angela's pain than any other person in this book don't and nobody have pain like Angela I'm gonna get <laughs> I'm gonna talk about Angela's pain right now my issue is that we heard not that we heard it from Angela is we heard it from Angela and Angela's head I'm like this should have been used this should have been used to in a moment of like intimacy between her and Derek to make their relationship stronger as a way of showing like, oh, this is the moment where like, I really trust you because I'm telling you something I usually don't tell people. And that should have been a moment that like really like solidified their relationship. I feel like that would have had more impact for what happens later on in the book with their relationship. If we had got that moment of them building that trust instead of it, oh, I'm going to tell the reader first what happened to me. And then like two chapters later, oh, yeah, I told Derek what happened to me and we're good now. 
we didn't even get the conversation. We didn't even know. I don't know if he hugged the kiss stuff. He was like, oh my God, I'm so sorry for you. And y'all, we're getting a lot into business, but I'm a romance person. Like, you know what? I'm, Let me, I'm gonna say it like this. You know, Greenleaf, when Lady May finally tells Bishop, oh, my dad, he did what he did to me. And you know, that yeah. makes their relationship stronger. Mm-hmm. And so when later on in the later seasons, oh, sorry, this is going to be spoilers for Greenleaf, but if you ain't watched it by this point, I don't know what you're doing. But, you know, later on in the season when they divorce because of the whole cheating scandal and stuff like that, it feels like a big deal because we have gotten development of their relationship. We've seen them get closer, have emotional moments. So it's emotional when they break up. I think that there's no actual romance in this book like not an ounce of romance i think that's what it was meant to be and that's why we came back and forth but i just feel like this how you say it, it's men crying in the dark i got too much of the women's perspective and it felt too much like a want to be romance because most of the story is about angela and Derek's relationship that's how i feel most of it is about their relationship of course everybody else but everybody else are side characters to their story and you know what? I, we should have known this was going to be about Derek and Angela because this is next to my notes. When Ben finally, finally gets a perspective, we about, what, 100 pages in, he finally gets a perspective and he get like two pages and then the chapter, in the same chapter, it changed to Mark and Mark get like two pages and then in the same chapter, it go back to Derek. I'm like, how are we finally hearing from Ben and his chapter is cha- shared with two of the other men? Y'all, I was on page 72 and I was still in Derek's perspective or I was in Angela's perspective. We ain't know nobody else on page 72. We ain't get to we ain't get to Tracy until 11. I mean, to 118. No, we had Tracy for like the third chapter and then she didn't show back up until like much later. And my thing, I'm going to read exactly what I wrote. I wrote, we 100 plus pages in <laughs> and we still have nothing on Ben other than he date younger women and haven't even got Tony at all. And Tony come up more than everybody else. That's your closest friend. Exactly. I'm like, Tony is Derek's closest friend amongst the men. And we getting Tony from everybody except Tony. I'm like, where, where is my... And you know what? I'm going to say this. Out of all these characters in my book, Tony was my favorite. I would say out of the men, Tony was my favorite. But I feel like that's not hard because the other men just... Look, I wanted this book to win. And as a black man, I, I couldn't relate. I could not relate to none of these black men. I would have preferred this book to be about Tony. Not gonna lie. I would have loved. And even when you read, the crazy thing is, even when you read from Tony's perspective, it is like a normal, like I enjoy his part of the book more, especially because I think we get more of that pain. Like he's really, really. He feels high emotions, not just about um, his daughter, but about Valerie and even about Tracy. Like he has, he's scared about losing her. He's nervous about his daughter. Like he ready to go to war. Even with the, we, I'm not going to skip too ahead, but you just see, I think out of all the men, you see more of a range of emotion and you see more pain, like actual pain. And he's the most literally literally the most mature out of and i feel like he was probably that the whole life his whole life they're trying to make it seem like Derek is mr khan to have it together no no Tony Derek ain't have person, together. Like, like, oh even somebody got this even somebody got this even somebody got this Ben, no tony's the only person if tony didn't have a crazy baby mama it would have been done deal you know done what deal. you, you want to know what i wrote in my notes this is gonna be something funny i wrote in my notes why are Derek's always a hot mess <laughs> it don't matter what story it is. It does not matter. Derek's, I'm not gonna lie. Even even in personal life, I know very few Derek's that are not menaces. Why are Derek's like, even if they're not menaces, they are like is Derek a chaotic name? Should I, I not name what y'all Derek? That's right. It don't matter, it don't matter what book it is, <laughs> they are always <laughs> a hot mess. <laughs> yeah. It's giving chaotic. I'm going I'm to go to my next point. Inconsistent writing. His writing became inconsistent a little bit with the details. I was like, 
do we have an editor? Did maybe we listen to it? You know what? Since people say this is waiting to exhale for men, maybe he had Terry's editor. I wasn't gonna get into it, but now we're gonna get into it. Because <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't gonna get into it. I he knows that I read. Did I, was it waiting to exhale? It was waiting to exhale. Or was it Stella Hospital? I think it was Stella. I feel like I hugged her back. And he knows I texted him because I love the movies. But the books? I should have known when they waiting to exhale for men. What? But the writing is not as terrible as Terry's. The story is better, but Terry writing, home girl, it took me a lot to get Look, to that book. Terry Tati writing, had me reading a free sample of one of Terry's books, and I'm reading, I'm like, when is the sentence going to end? Like, the sentence is the whole page. I'm like, this is like Charles Dickens, A Tale of Two Cities, like when he just had that one sentence as a whole paragraph, just going and going and going. I'm like, ma'am, commas, periods, semicolons, use them. Something. So when I first read this book, that was my first thought. I was like, at least there's some bad writing, but I've read worse. And that's sad. But the, at least the thing about, at least for her, for Wayne to Excel, is that the story is not or Stella, it's moments in the story where it made me mad, but the writing made me more mad than the actual story. This here, everything this made me mad. Was so frustrated. Mm. It says best selling, and I kept looking at that by best selling author, but it's not giving best selling author. But I will say, in some books in the nineties, it just that that's. But this is terrible. I'm sorry. You want to know why? Did, you want to know why his uh, why he's best selling? Why? Because these first two books on the cover, they're not fiction. Those are nonfiction books. So of course, when you oh, write books God. about okay. what it's feeling like to not be satisfied in a relationship, and especially why men cheat in a relationship, of course it's gonna be a bestseller because everybody want to know. Mm. So maybe that's why. Because baby, this was not giving. And then I skipped so much with my notes now. I At one point, I was like, I'm going to write something every page. I got to just... Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, knew, I knew from my notes what I thought about the book. I didn't even write down all of that. So I knew from like my mental notes and what I wrote down that this was... I knew you was going in. My next note was, Christy's not, Christy's not like other white girls. She's a white girl who likes black things. And I, I you want to know the, I'm going to tell you the exact part that I wrote that I know exactly where I was. It was at that darn party where, uh, I don't know if it was Derek or Ben, who's all like, where they all getting together. It was Tony. And there, Okay, and he's all like, oh, what you gonna pull out? You gonna pull out some country or something? And she started pulling out all these black people and she's like, oh yeah, I was a cultured white girl. Da, 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 da. I'm like, oh my gosh. I was like, Lord Jesus, fix it. I have a lot to say about that party. <laughs> um, <laughs> so you know what? Since, since I brought it up, we going to the party. Because y'all, this book Mark swore to God they in 1960. He swears they're in 1950. That's the part that Mark would that's the part where I'm like, Mark bring all these problems on himself because y'all are on the elevator. First of all, nobody he's like, Oh, they're uncomfortable because I'm with a white it's two black girls, and then it's an older white couple on the elevator. And they're all like, uh Mark's all like, oh, they're uncomfortable because I'm with a white girl. And so he starts standing there kissing all on Christy and doing the most in the elevator. I'm like, of course people are gonna be uncomfortable. Why is you doing that in public? Number one. And then number two, Christy's all like, oh no, Mark, stop. I don't want to. And Mark is all like, oh, I don't care what these people are thinking here. And that's why you got the finger. And that's why I'm, you got the finger. And I'm just like, Mark, you can't get mad at people being uncomfortable when you make the situation uncomfortable and that i guess that was the the his cry in the dark he could he could have he could have cried 
in the middle of the day, I wouldn't care. No, his I crying in the not... dark. His cry in the dark was when his mama was like, "Oh yeah, I approve of Christy." <laughs> and honestly, that should have came later in the book, in my opinion. But I'm gonna leave that where it is. His pain, like all of them, could have been so much more complex. And Mark could have been so much more complex. Even having the conversation about like with Christy about like how he used to, or even them having the conversation, like sitting there, it's like, oh, push under the rug. Or you think I don't know what it's like to be to be a, a white woman dating a black man? Tell me. Tell me more. Since we want to go there, tell me more. I want to know more about what, what happened. What is it like? We we never know. Especially coming from a racist family. What is that like? Like, what is it like to not have a relationship with your parents? Because you chose your man over your parents. What's, what's that like? What bothered me, too, is that, okay, he shocked me because I really thought I really thought he was going to have to give her that bubble bath or whatever he was going to have to do. I thought he was. So that part mm -hmm. shocked me. I said, oh, okay, he didn't have to. That was cool. I but even shocked. if was much more impactful. I wish he would have actually sat there and did an actual build up to like the dad where she was inside. It was like, oh, she just came out in a rush. What happened? We leaving. <laughs> you ain't gonna even tell her what happened? No, nah, we just going. They ain't gonna talk about she owe you a plate. No, actually, he did tell her. And she was all like, this is my life and you can't tell me what to do. And then they left. I went to law school when you asked and da da. I don't care. I was like, bye, Christy. I, I'm gonna tell you right now. We don't care. We do not care. <laughs> we do because... not care about what my thing is, I knew it was going to go left when he walked in there and the basketball game was on. See, from the bet, I was like, maybe it'll go right. Maybe from the bet, it'll go right. Because I know all that stuff he be talking How many times he mentioned this woman can't season her food? Why you keep asking somebody who don't season their food to cook for you? <laughs> but I really thought, I don't know. I was like, maybe it'll, because I wanted something that wasn't predictable to happen. But then when the stuff that wasn't predictable did happen, I was like, wait, what is this? Because it's like, it's one thing to be like, I don't know how to put it. Because it's one thing for them to be foreshadowing and then you go back and you be like, wait a minute. But in this book, it really be like the tiniest thing. And it's too much. But no, that dinner... I was really happy, actually, because that's what he get. Now, how, now what you going to do when you have, oh, you want somebody to accept you so bad and they don't accept you. Now what? Are you going to be you gonna be as tough on them? Mm -mm. I'm telling you, I knew it was going to go left when they had that basketball game on the TV because I'm like, oh, so y'all knew her black boyfriend was coming over, so y'all put on basketball? I thought we were supposed to be having dinner. Yeah, we were supposed to be coming. She said, oh, yeah, my dad switched to earlier. Why? And y'all not y'all y'all haven't started cooking. This is not a dinner. No, it's talking. About, can you help me in the kitchen? When she left, I said, "Oh, it's about to go down. <laughs> it's about to go down." And it went down in the most anticlimactic way. It could the most boringest way possible. If I was a basketball player, he would have accepted me. Like Mark, you run three businesses. And you just told this man you run three businesses. And you think he gonna accept you because you're an athlete. And you he know what you're about. Get out of here. Get out of here. And it's like that. It's like Mr. I just go through so much. I just go through so much. I know there are probably plenty. I know it's the nineties, but there are probably plenty of white women out there that didn't have racist families. Mm -hmm. I know it might be far in between, but I and you chose Christy. Because she talked to you when you look like a homeless man. I'm sorry, but when people talk to you when you look a mess, that should tell you what type of people they talk to. <laughs> so if I was her daddy too, based off of her actions, I probably would be looking the same way. Because cause you brought a janitor home last time. How I know this food not a janitor? Mm -hmm. My white women don't judge you from... Black she women don't either, but I'm just saying... The, the part with the parents, I wanted the dinner. I wanted the build up. I wanted like, the seriously. 
I wanted you know to what? Look like he was looking at me. He made this comment, then he did this. It was like, oh, the first thing he said to me, we could you fight know him. What? Could and that's my that was like one of my other issues with this book. It's like he would build up to situations, and then when you get there, it's like, okay. Like the first, it's like each of these storylines, they had something they were building up to. And every time you got to like the climax of the story, it, it fell flat. Like take Derek's big presentation, for example. We building up to this presentation, it's the most stressful thing in his mind to the point that he's neglecting his relationship with Angela. And we get to the little, uh, we get to the little PowerPoint and it's like, oh, well, the magazine is successful here and this is what we want to do and the guy is all like oh yeah okay well um angela what you think oh well i think he... <laughs> and just based off of her. that presentation had me so upset because i was like so first of all it's gonna hinge on angela whether he gets to make his magazine more nationally bought and then angela's first thing that she say is oh well i think he's not Honestly, I think he's not charging you enough. I'm like, Angela, this is a pitch. This is a business pitch. This, we, is, a we, business. <laughs> this is a business pitch. Like, this is not like you talking to your homeboy who's going to sponsor the magazine. This could take the magazine to the next level. And the first thing you say out your mouth is, oh, I think he's not charging you enough. You are being the enemy of progress, ma'am. <laughs> I ain't going to lie. I like that part. I did. I like that part because I was like, okay, girl, tell him he not charged enough. And I like the man. I think that's what made me like that part of the book because the man was just so fun and just like different. Like he gave a lot of the book gave stereotypical. So and in it gave stereotypical and it gave negative and not like negative in a pain way, like negative in a boo hoo like podcast way a lot of this book gave podcast to me <laughs> so when i got to that part i was like oh he's fun he not but he was still a businessman i think that's what i like and i liked angela's approach of like okay i'm gonna just be honest because i felt like for me from the business mindset was if his woman don't like it or if his woman can't stand 10 times 10 toes down for it then i know it's not good and then getting that perspective because Data can be one thing, but what are the people actually saying? So I like that. And I like, I think that like that part of the book sort of showed him in a more, I guess, vulnerable state. We were able to kind of get in his mind. I would have appreciated for us to get that shower, that shower scene where Angela's talking, talking about, I don't want to go bother him. I would have loved to know what was going on in his mind in the shower. I would have loved that because I think that that's another thing of like with the women in the book, we get them a lot, but we also see the men's pain through like a second, you know, like a second person's view. My next thought is Angela and Tracy both preach marriage before sex and having morals, but then they both contradicted themselves. My issue was that they was preaching that mess, but then they didn't stand by it. And you know what? It's not this this is not even a problem just with this book. I think this is a problem with 90s black literature in general. And I agree with you. Because in 90s book that is a thing. And every time they lose. Every time I have I've rarely read a book where they made it to marriage. Even this one book, I forgot what book I was reading, but the girl was like, no marriage, no sex before marriage. So they got engaged and then she started having sex with him. <laughs> and then they sitting up there being like, oh, I'm still, I'm still, you know, I'm still holding on to the morals that my mom is still to me. I'm like, but you compromised on that one. You, girl, your mama told you to be with a man who had a baby and a crazy baby mama. That's what, and I can't even talk about Tony because it's not him, but I just think the, the, the way this book was was just a lot. I did like the like the image in my mind of the party. I did like. I liked sorta. I like when she called Tony 
because it was Tracy's perspective first, getting ready to go to the party. I liked when she called, not Tony, when she called um Derek, like Derek called her, and they had that conversation about clothes. And, you know, he was like, I need you to check her out. That was a cute little friendship. Like, not superficial. There was a lot of superficial moments, but that one was cute. And then when everybody got to the party and they start eating, I was like, I know that's right. Y'all better get to that food. <laughs> then she ain't here. Y'all better go eat. And the like, but when they was pan- playing Twister, that was cute too. Now, what was not cute, what was not cute at all was being led not that far. That was not cute. I'm and like, what, what, do we, what do we need this for? I didn't need to know that Ben did that. It wasn't funny if it was trying to be funny. And nobody you know cared. What? You know what? Nobody if you want to you know if you want to be real about it, I think he wrote that in there because men's not Ben. Ben's whole personality is that he's the big guy. Mm. Just think about it. And kind of childish. Yeah, he's childish. He's the childish big so the funny big guy who be eating all the time and have nasty habits. But that wasn't funny. And if it was going to be, somebody could at least have like a, a, a smart comment or something. It was just like, we disperse. Okay, Puma. Okay. Where did y'all disperse to? Because y'all are in an apartment. Yeah. Okay. And then my next one was, okay, Nikki and Ben, let me find out. Listen, listen. When Nikki and Ben... Ben was like, he, it started off bad. He was all mad. Then she came out the house and she, Nikki and Ben could have been. Mm. And then when he called first, first of all, I should have known he wasn't going to be right when he wrote that scene of how he was telling Tony about him and Angela and what happened at night. Okay, but what killed me was when he was like, when what was cute was like he got Tracy in the front. What you think? What you think about her? Now with Tracy, Tracy in this book, Tracy, they're not gonna work out. Is this foreshadowing? Is this foreshadowing? Because I think and me, me mad, they're gonna work out. She don't know what she talking about. Mm-hmm. I just knew that it was. Yeah, I did. Oh my goodness. So. uh since we talking about Nikki, Nikki, I I really wanted to like her, you know, because they made her seem like, oh yeah, she's younger than him, but you know she's cool, she not doing nothing. But then what ended up happening was actually what happened was I stopped reading for a minute, and I went to go look up some info about the book, and I got spoiled on what she did. Oh lord! And I was like, dang it, Nikki, I wanted to like you. I wanted to like her because everybody in the book didn't like her. And I wanted her to prove them wrong. Here's my thing. Even with that, that could have been a beautiful story. She could have sat there and talked to him and talked about how she was hurt. The ch- Like a conversation. And the men could have been vulnerable with her. Conversation. Even like, because then that, how you said, that would have even made the break up even more intense because it's like I told you all these things that I went through I, da, 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 and you did what you did it would have gave but I really because that would have been a breath of fresh air I wanted them it was the fact it was how you said it was so much hate and then when you get like to like when you got that perspective and that's something I guess was a good another superficial moment though when you got that I wanted to see more of that moment with Ben when he was like you know he was mad at her but then it all came together and it's like oh she really just a mom she had this going on beautiful woman like getting to see that perspective I would have liked to see that a lot more especially because that would have been the only thing in this book not the only thing yeah no that would have been the only thing in this book that wasn't stereotypical then working out especially because Woman. especially because Ben's whole thing is oh I don't like dating women my age because they make me feel old and they got too much attitude and they always feel like they know everything and he's like I need somebody that I can like teach what's next before I even get to my next note is we almost 200 pages in and we finally get a chapter on Ben that's focused on him
Ben, you're dating mothers. What do you mean? He's like, I don't want nobody that older with their body worn out. You're literally dating people who have two, three kids at the tender age of 23. Why, why are we worried about bodies being worn out? Not to say people who are mothers, but it's like, I would figure that somebody who had a child you would think would be more worn down than, okay. Okay, I, where's the, like, his whole little speech about dating younger women was like, it was giving Mark, yeah. Been in that speech, oh, I only date younger women because I need somebody I can train. That is the stupidest, Mark. I was like, you don't want, you don't want a woman, you want a daughter. You want somebody who can, who you can tell what to do, when to do it, and they have to do it no matter what, because you are in charge of them. And I'm like, you don't want a woman. You don't want an equal. You want a daughter. What you want somebody you can tell what to do. Just like that lady in the nail shop said. And what got me was like, even that scene was like, Nikki was kind of being matured about it. She was like, what you say? To, like, let him. And she was like, that's a crazy mindset to have. Like, she was being real mature about everything. For them to do my girl like that. Look, being I want so... I wanted Nikki to win. I wanted her to have. prove everybody wrong. She should have. Oh my goodness! And then yeah. my next note, and I wrote the I wrote the page number down. I said page two hundred and eleven. We finally get Tony. We finally get a book. For, we finally get a perspective from Tony. And you know what? <laughs> this chapter was a double edged sword because I was happy that we finally get to hear from Tony. And this is also the chapter where it became a two. Mm -hmm. What made it a two? Come on. It was because it's like it's Tony's perspective. And like he's talking about basically stuff we should have went over in the first half of the book. Oh, my feelings on Erica this, da 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 this. I don't know. It's just this is the point in the book where it just started falling off. I was like, once we got Tony, it it just it went from a little realistic to okay, what am I reading? I think. When I got to Tony, I one I already liked Tony from everything everybody said. I was already I when Angela described Tony, I said not Angela. Um, Tracy described Tony. I was like, yes, I like him. Well, I will say the same thing. I wish we would have got more of his perspective because his part of the book was the most where I was like, that was the part where I had the least like, what are y'all doing type of thing because his part. I think what you how you said it didn't make sense with the whole book, but it made sense. I feel like if he would have did all the characters like this, where we where we got their perspective, but they were actually going through things, they actually felt emotions, they actually like he just was a different the writing to me switched up, like the approach switched up with him. So I would say it was very like I think I especially because I feel like everybody else was just stereotypical like it was not even he wasn't even given he wasn't even he kind of was giving I hate my, my baby mama but he wasn't giving too much of like I hate her type thing it was very short and sweet very short and sweet and for the most part he hated her because one she trapped him but two how she was treating his daughter mm -hmm. that was it but he was trying to be cordial Tony Tony he not perfect, but he the most perfect out of them. Yeah, like I said, Tony was yeah. my favorite out of the men. And that that's not hard. You know what? I'm looking at my notes. And I said, um, this must have been when I got to Tony. Because I said, the book is getting okay. Very annoying beginning. But it seems like he's finding his groove. Definitely like a, a third, a three. It's like definitely a three or something like that. <laughs> a three right now. Finding, you know, his finding, his finding his groove and we over halfway through the book. I was holding on the crumbs. Anything I could get. You know, I was rooting for this book. Anything I could get. I say it's getting it's getting somewhere. I was rooting for it too. But that was the point it became um, a two to me. Um so this is not in my notes. So I don't know exactly where this fell in the book, but I see it a little bit down. Vanessa. Vanessa and Angela. Angela, ma'am, 
why are you telling all your business to somebody you met in an airport? But she, she did, but she did. She just like, yes, it's one thing. But one, two, it's like, yeah, I fly tennis, whatever. And it's like, I, okay, fast forward, you realize she said a lot more. But in the part, she didn't really say, she was like, that's my man. He cool. He cool in real life. Like, he attractive. She really, I was like, I didn't know. It. I didn't know they was this. I thought they was just, no, no they, we cool. We met each other. They wasn't this because they literally met at an airport where Vanessa is the flight attendant yeah, and Angela, Angela just a regular person flying. Vanessa don't know she a flight attendant too. That was my thing. I'm like, so you just go sit next to a flight attendant and just start talking. And I'm like, you can tell this was before, uh, this was pre-2001 because why is the flight attendant sitting there waiting? Usually they come in and they go straight to the plane to start setting up and getting mm -hmm. stuff together. They don't be sitting there waiting. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I, it, for me, it kind of makes sense because they were both flight attendants, but it was one of those, okay, she made a homegirl type of thing. I didn't, I didn't know what it was going to be. I knew, I knew it wasn't going to be no homegirl. I didn't know. I thought it was going to be like, Cause she literally was just like, and I got the hint of like her being like he was fine and stuff, but it it didn't give for me, it didn't give I gave enough information for this person to be that close to him. But maybe I don't remember it enough. Because for me, it was just like, yeah, I know him. That's who I'm gonna go see. He cool in real life. I knew it wasn't no homegirl because she was sitting there fangirling over him. And I'm like, Honestly, I thought it was just going to be like a little one-time meeting where they do a little, oh, hey, girl, hey, girl, and then that's it. Like, we never see her again. But I'm that's like, I mean. I'm like, she's not going to be no homegirl. That's what I mean. I didn't think that they were going to be, let me not say homegirls, but I thought it was going to be like a cordial type thing. I didn't think that they were going to be like, I didn't think that they were this. I didn't think they were this. So I'm, I am I know I'm fast forwarding. So what, you, you tell me what happened after the play. But my next note was Ben is dumb. Moving her in? Probably. Moving her in. See, I didn't think any... I'm like... Actually, no. I'll tell you what it is. It was um the scene when the baby daddy came over because they was getting ready to go to a party. So the baby daddy came over and was... um I think this is when I wrote it. And I just wrote it oh, later. Oh, that was New Year's. Yeah, that was yeah. New Year's. But I was saying Ben is dumb because when the baby daddy came over... Uh, and he went in the house to talk to her, and then they came out together. I was like, and Ben was like, "Oh, they was in there for a minute." I'm like, Ben, what do you think they were doing in there? They went in there talking about, "Oh, you get the child for today, and I'm gonna get it for tomorrow." No, they was in there having a little get together. Foreshadowing. And so I think why I wrote Ben is I... dumb is because um, I think when he moved her in, and that was the part where uh. He was talking about he moved her in and she wasn't doing what she was doing before. I'm like, yeah, dummy, because she's seeing you and him. Keep in mind, I was already spoiled by this point, so I knew it was going to happen. See, when we got to that part is when I got frustrated. I feel like they could have did something different. I was really rooting for Nikki. And then I thought, I don't know, I thought it was going to be good because she had already been there. And he was like being defensive about it. Like, don't be talking about my woman. I'm like, I know that's right. Just for it to go where we about to. <laughs> yeah. We about to. But me, yeah, Mark don't know nothing. Mark don't know nothing. He he dating a white woman. And not because he like white women, but because <laughs> he don't like black women. That whole issue just got on my nerves because, like I said earlier, Mark is the problem. He always the one starting the problem. It's like, so you can talk about how Nikki's no good and that, this and that, that, but the minute Ben say something about Chrissy, it's, oh, I don't want to hear it. And y'all done had a fight and now y'all not talking seriously. When you was talking smack, it was you. You were the one who started the whole argument of talking smack. And but want to be, everybody should accept my love. And it's, it's just because I love white women don't mean. Like, y'all was supposed to be sitting there watching a movie from Blockbuster and you walking around the house looking for undergarments and stuff. Tell me, I went looking for it. So how you found it? How you found it? <laughs> that man, I swear, he wasn't, um, 
you know how you be sitting there in the room with people? This is him. Yeah, I date white women. What about it? What what about it? Yes, I do. And I'm yeah. I'm very happy with my decision. Everybody. Who asked you? Who asked you that? But yeah, that whole situation, especially because like he tried to make Ben feel bad, but it's like you came at him. You really came in his house and came at him like that. And it don't matter if time after time he a grown man. Y'all, he older than all y'all. Let him have his moment and figure it out on his own like he did. Mm. Just like you. I don't know what he didn't figure out on his own. He ain't figured out nothing. <laughs> I'm, just, nothing. I'm just mad at the way he had to learn his lesson. That's all. My next note. Two days. I'm really about to throw this book because <laughs> WTH, WTH, two days. That man said, it's two, the day circle, big, two days from now. Two days? <laughs> two. He made me, I thought he was going to say two weeks, you know, a whole week, a month from now. That man said a whole two days. I'm not waiting. Mm -hmm. Then I was like, um, he bet not because I didn't know how it was gonna go. I'm like, he bet not milk this and be like, Well, we never had sex, sex, you know. I never act because he was like the best act of non penetration. I said, He better not. And I was like, I hope Angela be his behind and hers too. I hope he because and he talking about you should never be talking about your business. Not and for me, it's like, But where were they talking about business to? Because literally on the plane, it was, hi, bye, girl. Hey, girl. Got a man. Bye. Why was y'all even? I just. Like, that's what I want to know. It's too much stuff off screen for me. I need you to put some stuff on screen so that I can, I can have something lined up. Why is all this stuff happening off the screen? Mm -hmm. Why is it happening out of the book? Every time something happens, it's like how you said, inform, like, they might tell you, but then it's like, oh, yeah, I told Derek this. Oh, yeah, I told him this. Oh, yeah. It's like that. It's not really, like, explaining. It's like, I want to see you tell him. I want to see y'all have these conversations. See, when she showed up at the club. Um, For me, it was the sister that had a stank face. And <laughs> actually, you know what? Was... When I was reading that part, I thought it was Angela sitting over there at the end of the bar, like kind of incognito, like trying to act like she was out of town, but really she was there. And so she sent Vanessa over to see what he was going to do. So that's what I thought that's it was. I thought, I thought it was a setup. Because he, a setup. he said the lady turned away. I'm like, ooh, that might be Angela. But no, it was just some random girl. And then you know when they, um, you know when she went, when he was like, um, uh, they were asking, do you have any condoms? He was like, no. And then she was like, she had some in her car, but she didn't go get them. I was like, oh, this is a setup. This is a setup. Like, he he fell right into it. She about to bust in there. So what you're doing? But no. No. It, wasn't it was setup. just, it was just, it was just Vanessa being what we all knew she was going to be. A girl trying to steal somebody else's man. I feel like it being a setup would have been more interesting. Because it would have touched once again on Angela's trust issues and what she'd be going through. And then at least we would get the backstory of how the heck they became friends. Because nobody telling me when she told this girl her business. <laughs> Dude, nobody, nobody. When did Vanessa, when did she see Vanessa other than that plane? When did she hang out with her? It could have been like, yeah, I was watching you. And yeah, we have been talking a few times. And she said, let me go test your man. Something. We don't even got no flashbacks from Angela when she saw her in there. She was like, she just, oh, you gonna do all of that when I talk to you about my man? What did you tell her? My we shoe. The audience will never know, huh? You know what? We gonna go to this next point because it's gonna tie back into this. My next point says the wedding. <laughs> you know what my next point says. It says, it's I'm gonna read you, I'm gonna read you mine and then I want you to read yours. Mine says <laughs> the wedding. Why is it so short? Why is Nikki a bridesmaid? Why is Angela the maid of honor? Where's Tracy's homegirls? Bobby literally says, 
Tracy don't got no friends. How the hell is Angela her maid of honor? When they said Angela dressed was special because she was the maid of honor, her and Derek hadn't even been dating six months at that point, had they? No, I think it was like a year at that point. A year? And my thing is... But her and Tony had already been engaged. Yeah, but my thing is, why is Nikki a bridesmaid? Tracy don't even like her. It ain't gonna never gonna work. I was oh, I like, was I read that. I was like, why is Nikki in the wedding when she nobody likes her except Ben? No cousins. That's I was like, what kill me. Do none of them have friends. No and I cousins. was like, where's Tracy's homegirls? Like, where are her friends? And then the reason why I say this tie back into the last point is because where was Angela's friends in the book? Did Angela have any friends outside of? She did. Because I don't remember yeah. now. So she had that best friend. And then she would talk about like her sorority sisters from time to time. Like when she went, when she first was talking to Derek after the Valentine's thing, her homegirl, one of her sorority sisters were like on the phone talking about why do men cheat or something crazy like that. And so she had, she had at least one friend and she had that other girl, but she had something more than Tracy. Tracy. Tracy had no friends. Trey, Angela had a real maid of honor. She would have had a real maid of honor that she knew since college. Tracy, on the other hand, that's you know what that spoke to though. That's what happened when you pick me. That's what happened <laughs> when you pick me. You don't have no friends. So I feel like I was just like, "Where's her homegirls?" I'm like, Tracy didn't have nobody she could. Call. I could, I could rationalize Angela being in the wedding because they had. had it, the book said they had some talks. Where they became friends, but I couldn't rationalize Nikki and Christy, especially I Nikki. Forgot. I forgot Christy was even in the wedding. Why is she there? Did you literally just say, "Okay, y'all home, y'all dates"? They're just gonna be in the wedding. No, that I feel like that's literally what happened. Like, I feel like he wrote them as the bridesmaids because. Well, I, I'm gonna give you two reasons because the second reason is my next point. The first reason is because the women. They have no identity outside of being the girlfriends and the fiance. Like, what do we really know about them outside of their romantic relationships? And and being in Angela's head. Like, what did we learn anything about Tracy's backstory? And for Tracy to for Tracy to have such a big chunk, because it's literally Derek, then Angela, then Tracy with the most parts. For her to have a big chunk and to not have any friends and nothing, most of Tracy's background. Is talking about um, what's that boy's name? Tony. What's his baby? Valerie. And Valerie. Talking about Tony, talking about Valerie. Talking about Erica. Talking about when she met Tony. And we don't know what that girl do for fun. All we know is she's we a real estate agent, agent, and that's it. She is the real estate agent. She don't like Valerie, and she somehow knows zodiac signs. That's it. And then, no and then, what do we know about Christy except for she got racist parents? And that she was listening to black people growing up. What do we know about Nikki? Except she got a kid and she young. Trying to go to school. And we don't actually, we know nothing about Nikki. Because everything we knew about Nikki was a lie anyways. So and, then, even, even know who Nikki is. and then her and then all we know about her homegirl is that her homegirl is named start with a J and that she just watched Nikki kill or Nikki go do her. Oh, he said a little bit. Oh, she's so sweet, but she talks so much and nah, nah. I'm like. Why are you talking about that lady? You trying to get her? Let me let me find out. I'm just like we don't know. We don't know nothing about the women outside of their relationship to the men, and I feel like that's why they were the bridesmaids because there was no other women to choose to be the bridesmaids. Like if he would have introduced her friends, we would have been like, well, who were they, and why we ain't seen them earlier? That's why I, it was too. It was adventurous for me for him to do a woman's perspective because this is literally about men. So you really aren't even supposed to go into too much detail about the women because it's literally supposed to be about men and their emotions and what they go through, which apparently is nothing <laughs> other than baby mama drama. Baby mama drama and self-imposed. Everything is almost self-imposed except the baby mama drama. Everything else. You okay. go, what was you going to say? I'm sorry. My, second, my second reason why the wedding was had so many questions is because them final chapters, you notice how the final chapters got shorter? I was like, um, 
these final chapters are seeming like deadline is coming up and he had to wrap it up to make deadline. So he just started writing down like the basics of what's supposed to happen. And that's why there's so many gaping holes in the story. And I was like, that's kind of evident with the wedding because he didn't have time to go into the uh, the friends and all that at a time because he got to wrap it up. It's 322 pages and you wasted 75% of the book on nothingness. <laughs> oh, no character development. Oh, no crying. Oh, nothingness. Derek cried in the dark one time. He's the only person we saw cry in the dark. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Because I'm wait, get to your next point. My next point, since we brought it up, I ain't gonna lie. I very much, very much enjoyed Angela playing detective. Playing detective. I was like, because I was like, no, it couldn't be her. It could not be her. I was like, not your best friend. Like, yeah, I'm like her best friend, and she was so convinced. I said, "That's a good part of writing." Her high now, now her running up on them. I said, "Now, how you feel? How you feel with the <laughs> egg on your? Head? How you feel?" But no, for me, it was it was her sitting out behind that bush, waiting all day for them to come home. I'm like Angela, come on now. But then you feel bad because you like right idea, wrong person. <laughs> that good friend you have is right. Just the wrong person. Wrong. That girl wasn't even her friend. That's what made me mad. Y'all, y'all are not friends. Y'all are not friends. Y'all had a conversation here and there. Y'all are not homegirls. Y'all didn't even say it's like even if they would have put in the book like they had a few conversations, but no. But when she showed up to the hotel, I could have slapped Derek in his mouth. Because he just sitting there through the book. And then when she said, who is it? And want to run her mouth, I said, yeah, Angela did exactly what she needed to do. She did exactly what she needed to do. He, Derek, lucky he didn't get hit. I want him to get hit so bad. And I'm not even a domestic violence person, but listen. It's one thing to cheat on somebody. It's another thing to get angry with them when For they get to you. Cheating. When they catch you cheating. <laughs> and she didn't even know he was cheating. He could have really just been like, you know what? You're going to pop up over here. No, ma'am, not tonight. But Vanessa wanted, she wanted to be seen. So she said something and got carpet burns because that's what she get. And then my, and my then, thing was, my thing was Angela talking about some, I should have known it was you, Vanessa. I'm like, how would you have known? We saw y'all interact once. Maybe because we didn't know. How was you gonna know? She like how and then it's like for me, I think that it was hilarious when he was like, everybody got something going on, even Ben. I'm the only one that don't. Vanessa lasted what outside the sex, there was no substance. I wonder why. Would, would have never known that. We would have never known because we barely know her. All we know is she a flight attendant. They like to steal men. And I didn't like, I liked how everybody kind of calmed down. It's still Mark. I don't remember what Mark was doing. I only remember Tony getting married. It wasn't until the end that he really was missing, what you call it? He was missing, uh, I'm about to call her Valerie. He was missing um Angela. But anyways, let's go to the next part. Baby, I got like two lines. Tracy ain't got no friends. It's the last, it's the end of the book. It's the end of the book from there. Because I got tired. I got tired. I didn't even, I had to stop taking notes because I was like, I got too much to say. So he got to the party. And that's why I'm like, that, that's emotion. That's something. That's something to cry about. He, he, because why? And then it made me more like, okay, with being angry with Valerie. Because it's like, girl, what are you doing? Why, why are you, you doing Why would you put your child in this predicament? And he's the person who had common sense and valid reasons to be mad. Like, it's not even like he tried to put himself in that situation. It just happened. But he said, I'm going to get my daughter. And what he said, well, you do it again, it's going to be a problem. And then when they had to come back to jump them, oh, that was that was it. That was like, I said, you better get, he said, I wish the police would have gave me just a little bit more time. I said, I know that's right, Father Tony. You better get up no. and protect your daughter. That whole time I was reading that part, you remember when I was reading the family business 
by Carl Weber. You know, mm -hmm. my favorite part, you know, my favorite part is that whole mission with London trying to get her daughter back, trying to get Mariah oh, yeah. back. This would, that's what this reminded me of. It gave, and Tony, that's the thing. Tony, every, not every decision, but most of the stuff Tony did make sense. It gave, I ain't gonna lie. It gave, it gave what this book should have been about. That whole thing was like, wait a minute. She took the baby away. It was exciting until she had to slap her. I said, why why we get this far? I thought we was feeling bad for her. She was and until Valerie got to talking crazy. My thing is, how did how was Tracy able to slap Valerie in front of all these police and not get no type of charge? I think because of her relationship with Valerie, it made me it made me even more like because of the beginning, the pick me vibes. And you already know this woman don't like you. You've already tried to give her kind words. And what does she always do? She talk crazy to you. So why this time when she lost her child, she's getting arrested and she's in handcuffs so she can't fight you back. Was this the time that you chose to slap her? Was that really needed? <laughs> was that really needed? But I was glad Tony got her back. I knew he was going to take her anyways. So... I was like, one way or another, he was probably going to get this baby. He had real problems, real solutions. Like, even with the wedding, when he got when he got um um cold feet, that's more emotion than all the other men put together. And then when he went through the roller coaster of like, you know what, actually, I really do love her. He cried at the altar. I said, look, now that's men crying. Where the rest of y'all crying at? Y'all ain't doing other than self-imposed crying. So after that, um... And then and it was got, uh, it was a Ben and Nikki with her whole giving him an STD. I was like, they, Nikki, I wanted you to win. They, they didn't just make her young and dumb. They made her young. It was him finding the videotapes. It was so out of character that I didn't like it. And you so much so much better could have been done. And it was so out of character. Like even him throwing the stuff on the lawn and then Mark being like, that's what like that's what she's supposed to be treated like. You just ready to hop on like the that's black now woman trying. Now we doing too much. Yeah, I understand Ben being mad, but like him finding the videos, I just feel like all that was played out. Nikki, I I truly believe Nikki deserved better. I I don't even think, oh, she should have did, but no, Nikki deserved better. Nikki deserved, that could have been a beautiful story about her getting it together. Even when she was like, you know, I know I haven't been doing much, but I'm getting it back together. It could have been a turnaround and be like, you know what, she got back to school. She realized she was just depressed going through this. And even if it was me giving him ideas for the book, but it could have been like, even if it was like her coming out and being like, you know, I was just depressed. I'm sorry, da da. You know, back when we first got together, I was still dealing with my baby daddy, even though I said I wasn't. Them going through a whole, you know, ordeal about that because that's traumatizing. And then getting back together in the end because they love each other and she got a little boy. You know, all of that would have been cute. That would have been cute. That would have gave it depth. I wanted Nikki to win. Like, and so when that whole thing happened, I was like, darn it, Nikki. But I wasn't surprised because, like I said earlier, when the baby daddy came over and they was in the house for a minute, I'm like, okay, yeah. But they had to make her, no, because he had to make her not trifling, the most trifling of them all. The most trifling of them all. Not only did she give him, spoilers are coming, not only did she give him an STD, but the videotapes? Multiple men? Like, y'all had to make her, and then why would she be so stupid to leave him in there? That made me, like, I just, she deserves so much more. It was very, I feel like he's a lazy writer. Like, I feel like his brain scattered, he's a lazy writer. And I, I think that he just did what fit, and I guess that's what you do as a writer, but did what fit the narrative that he wanted. Because that was just, and Ben ain't even cry. So where we getting the crying from? Because he ain't even cry. You know what, because you said it, are we just going to get into it. This book is called Men Cry in the Dark. 
It's four men and only three of them cried. And one of them cried, well, no, two of them cried twice. Let's let's go over this. Derek cried because the first time he cried was because uh he was like life is good because he he was winning. The second time was because he was lonely because Angela left him after he cheated. I'm like, so he got happy tears and sad tears, and the second time was his fault. Tony cried at the wedding, and Tony cried when he lost Erica. Emotional Real moments tears. to cry. Emotional reasons to cry. Out of his Mark, control. Mark cried because his mom accepted his girlfriend. And then and then Ben didn't even cry. What pain? Huh? What pain was there? What exhale was there? <laughs> what was it? I it it listen, listen, listen. How was Derek's dad more impactful to the story than every other man in the story? How was he him and Tony? Him and Tony, him and Tony. Him and Tony, his daddy said, don't do it. Do not take yourself to that radio station. I mean, do not go down there to Atlanta and pop up on that girl. Do not do it. Do not do it. That's another thing. He did that. And then when Angela did it, now all of a sudden he mad. And I'm like, you did it first. Now, Mark going to go see Big Red. I forgot about Big Red. Because they call about uh Christy. My favorite part of that is when he screamed up and was like, what did you do with that bike? He said, I sold it. Mm-hmm, sure did. You know what? Let's let's talk about Big Red. Let's talk about Big Red. Let's talk about Ben. Ben is a retired gangster. First of all, I didn't mm -hmm. know you could be a retired gangster. I thought you was in for life. And when you wanted to get out, the only way out was death. So how is he a retired gangster? And got every, he, he still got all the respect of all the other gangsters in the city. He's sending them flowers and stuff and paying for their funerals and stuff. And then, I'm, and then they talking about some, oh, nobody messes with Ben. I'm like, this is not realistic. The only reason why I feel like it's realistic is because how close Ben and Red is. And Ben like went to college. Like he got out. So it's not like he was like 25 or I feel like for it to be realistic is like them being like you gotta you because some people, especially in this time, things were a little bit different with people and like having I guess you could say like OGs, like having older people around you, other people around you. I don't know if they had more sense, but they seem like they had more sense. So they would encourage them to like go to school. If you can get out, get out any way that you could. So I think that's the only thing that happened while he retired because he went to college and like, but he still kept his connects. And, and I really think if it wasn't, it wouldn't make no sense. And that's my thing. He did that, but he didn't pay it for. He wasn't trying to help nobody else get out. Not that I remember. He just paying for funerals and sending flowers. Well, he told Red, he was like, I can get you legitimate business. Like, I can get you whatever. He was like, I'm not getting out. Sorry. That was great for you. I'm not doing it. They not going to shoot my daughter again. That's all I know. I'm not, I'm not leaving. Literally, that man was like, nah, I'm not doing it. This book was just, I wanted this book yeah. to win. Let me and tell it you just, when he got it let me down. Let me tell you when he got a zero. <clears throat> that last chapter. That man went all the way there. Got on that phone. Said this woman's name on the radio in the town I live in. They have three businesses in. And let them know you cheated on me. And they want me to take you back on the radio. And um, hold on. Well, Derek, I'm sorry things didn't work out, Justin said. Actually, it worked out just fine, Derek said, sounding relieved. 
I needed a woman to come along and tell me to go to hell. Maybe that's what a lot of men need to grow up. And if you're listening, Angela, I want to thank you for demanding respect. It has made me a better person and a better man. I can slap you with this book. <laughs> I can slap you with this book. We did all that to end up nowhere. We ended up nowhere. Nowhere in the book. It's not even enough time for him to learn his lesson and even possibly redeem himself. It's not you. I'm telling you, that man had deadline coming up and he's like, I got to wrap it up. And if you are listening, Angela, I want to thank you for demanding respect. It has made me a better person and a better man. And that's how you're going to end this book. That's how we wrap up this book. That's how zero. And you know what? Now that we talking about zero. it, where was the conclusion for the other three? The four men that's supposed to be crying in the dark, where was the conclusion for the other three? Zero. Other than everybody got somebody. Mark got Christy. Tony got, Tony got Tracy. And even Ben got him a woman. She a little round, but she still... A little round nurse. That's his age. Zero. Zero. See that he was he was down to like a two. But that ending, I had to give him a zero. I don't care. I, I know somebody's gonna say that's harsh. A zero. When I tell you this story went absolutely nowhere. Y'all heard all of this. We've been talking about nonsense for the last two hours. None of this made sense. None of this <laughs> went together. There was no story, no point, no character development. Nothing happened. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm so mad when I got to the end of that book this man right here I wish I was Angela I wish I could fight like Angela <laughs> I wish I could fight like Angela that's what I'm, I'm gonna say let me tell you I'm gonna give my final thoughts and I'm gonna let Tati go off all I'm gonna go say ahead. is all I'm gonna say is all I'm going to say about men cry in the dark is that I wanted men to, I wanted men cry in the dark to win. I wanted this book to win. I was literally searching high and low for a book to put on for black men. And this, this was not it. It failed me. You failed me. And you know what? I heard that stage play was even worse than the book. I can only imagine. Because this right here, let me tell you something. I know I said it before, but this is a zero. This is a zero. That last page, this man right here, if I could fight like Angela, him right here, he would have to see me. This book, that ending was, that's when it got a zero because I realized it was going no, like it was no coming back. There is no character development. There is not really a plot. There's nothing happening. Everything is this. The whole, and every time you think it's gone, it don't. It does nothing. Derek is the same person at the beginning that he is at the end. The same exact all person. The person that went through the most of a roller coaster got like two chapters. We don't even get to see how hurt Angela is. All we know is she said, don't call my phone. No more. That's all we saw. We didn't see nothing else. We don't know what happened. We don't know if Terry got a baby. Or, I mean, Tracy got a baby or not. How big? And then everything we found out at the end was like, Derek, yeah, my home, everybody together. He said, me, I'm lonely. Like you was at the beginning. You lonely because you didn't learn nothing. Talking about, I learned a lot. Sometimes you got to get dogged out. What did you learn? What did we learn from this book? 300. 300. In 32 pages of nothingness. That last chapter, that's where he got the zero. Because, especially because of what Ronald said. Y'all, I'm a romance person and I read both male and female authors, but I read enough male authors to know what this could have been. I think that's what irritates me the most because if he wanted to save this, he had plenty of opportunities to make this a good book. 
And he chose time after time after time to make it. A, hmm, I'm not going to be ugly. But I'm going to just say, this is a zero. Okay? I will give it a negative one. But since I cannot, it's a zero. Y'all, y'all don't know how much I hate this book. And it's because it's it's a bunch of pages of nothingness. Nothing comes together. You get a whole bunch of information that you're forced to read. By 74, I was tired. I took like a two-day break just for it to be. I'm going to read this one more time. I'm going to read this one more time and I'm done. I needed a woman to come along and tell me to go to hell. Maybe that's what a lot of men need to grow up. And if you're listening, Angela, I want to say thank you for demanding respect. It made me a better person and a better man. For who? Where? Show me. Show me. You can't because that's where you ended the book, Michael. We don't know. We'll never know. Why? Because it, it better not be the second version of this. It better not be a number two. This is the only one. If I find out there's a number two, I may have to hunt this man down. He has to. Okay. One more and thing. you know it's crazy? What? Because I'm not even the critic. Ronald is the critic. I'm not even the one to be the critic. I read whatever and I really don't be caring. I really do not be caring. It's hard to get like a lower than a three for me. Look, let me just let me just say this. Um, like I said, I wanted this book to win. But being that I'm a black man, and it's supposed to be about men, the only thing I related to in this book was their the dynamic of their friendship within their friend group, like how certain um, certain ones were closer with each other than others. I'm like, that's the only thing that's relatable to me. Other than that, I don't relate to nothing these men got going on, what they're going through, because they brought all of it on themselves. I wouldn't make none of them decisions that they was making. None of them. They make no sense in who grew. Tony? Even Tony, Tony went through a roller coaster, but Tony's the same person. I'm sorry. He's the same person. Great person from the beginning, great person to the end. Ben literally learned his lesson. And we know why. Because Derek told us. Not because we heard it from Ben, but because Derek told us. Mark, the same old Mark that still believed the same stuff that he believed in it from beginning to end. Nothing changed with Mark. And Derek wants us to believe that he a better man when he went down there and embarrassed that woman on national radio like that. When he went down there and embarrassed that woman, his father said, don't do it. He said, I'm not going to do it. And did it anyways. Y'all, we could talk about books all day. <laughs> so books, movies, all of that, all day. So I can't even say we didn't expect to get it this deep. But oh it was goodness. great. It was fun. This was definitely fun. We definitely have to do it again. I already know. Let me, I'm over here. I already know what my next book gonna be. I already know my next assignment. <laughs> oh shoot! Hold on. It's, it's these two. Uh, uh, the first and the second. Not my. Not my. Now I get an extra assignment. I should have <laughs> put it there. <laughs> you get extra assignment. I already know my next assignment. I don't know what I'm a, What I want to have. Ronald Reed yet. Because I want to do, I don't want just romance. So I, I, I did romance. I, I did know what family. I want y'all to read. I know what I want y'all to read. Oh, I know what you, my favorite book. My go, favorite go. book that dropped in here. Go, go read book. this. Go buy it. A That's book my that name. Has Characters. Character development. Okay. Won't leave you hanging. And don't play. And you know what? You know what? While we add it. While we oh. add it. You know, I mean, if, if y'all want to get these ones too. Bam. Love all of them. I'm going to try to link them below. There's another one. I mean... <laughs> There's another one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's how it looks. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Get that one. Get, get all four. Get yes. I have all four. They're on my bookshelf along with this one right here. Mm -hmm. 
And I may put this one up there, but I may see if I can get like a big or a hard copy. If I can't, then it's gonna go up there because this is definitely a this is a this is great. Like Ronald had very good choices. No, very I didn't. See, I'm not blaming just, him for this because he didn't really, I listen, y'all. I knew for a fact when I opened that book that he had not. I knew before, but when I opened that book, I knew he really had not read that book. When I opened <laughs> that book and saw how he was writing, the writing alone let me know they never read this book. He did not read that book at all. I when was we really. Got to I was really searching high and low for a black man to put on. And sir, you failed me. Maybe I can find another one. Some of the people that I read. So he already knew certain people. Like I, I have almost drawn Dickie. So, and I love me some Aura Tyree. So I'm like, what, what, what are the, I, don't, I ain't gonna lie. We need to call the authorities. Oh, whoever said that was whoever said that was way to excel for men, we're gonna find you. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna call the authorities and we're gonna find you. Because y'all deserve some time to be served. Y'all lie. <laughs> y'all deserve some time to be served. But this was very fun. We're definitely gonna do it again. I have my assignments. I have to give Ronald's his. If you guys like this, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Okay, if you liked it. If you didn't like it, give it a thumbs up anyways because I said so. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead and make sure y'all follow Ronald. Make sure y'all go get his book. Make sure y'all pick up these books that we recommended. Sula is a great one. Friends and Lovers, great one. Yeah. Everything I Never Told You. It was okay. Black man. I mean, if you, if you, if you want to get this one, go ahead. And um, yeah, y'all. Like I said, like comment, subscribe, share. You know, so we can get more people into this potential family. Okay, so you can grow with your girl, and, and so you can grow with your girl. And and I'm gonna say, Ronnie, you ain't gonna dance. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. We gonna get out of here because. We we'll be talking. We we would talk so much because we literally had to say this conversation. We was on the phone. We was on the phone. <laughs> what day? Trying to plan this. You know what? And let me say this. You know what? I'm just going to say it. I ain't going to say it. I'm say this one piece. Let me say it. You know what? Never mind. No, for I'm real. We on the phone. I'm going to just I'm gonna just say this. Why was Nikki in the wedding? That was the one thing we did say. That was the one thing. I had to read some. I said, Tracy don't got no friends. When they say Nikki in the wedding... When they told me that Angela had a special thing on because she was the maid of honor, I said, Nick, uh, Trump don't got no friends. Tracy don't got no, that girl don't got no friends. I was and that's literally what like, when you really like them. Literally, like, where is Tracy's home, girls? All right. So, y'all make sure y'all follow. Oh, well, I hope y'all enjoyed this video. If you watching from my video, if you watch from my channel, go follow Tati at Tati Simone. Simone is spelled S O M N E. And if you have an mm -hmm. issue, talk to her mama. And uh, <laughs> if you if you uh, if you watching on Tati, follow me at my name. It's literally Ronald Savage Jr. And um, yeah, we hope you enjoyed this. We're gonna try this again <laughs> next month, but I hope y'all enjoyed it. Enjoyed as much as we did. Okay, y'all. Bye. Bye. My next note says self promo. Really? It's Sister Soldier and Coda Swinner ever all over again. So oh. I'm talking about I'm talking about that part where um I don't know which one it was. But they was talking about some, oh, I was reading this. It was Mark. He was in the uh in the tub talking about some, oh, I'm reading this book called uh Why Men Cheat by Michael Bazin, and it's so good. Da, 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 da. I hate when authors do that. 
I'm like, don't insert yourself in the story. You don't need, if your story is good enough, you don't need to do self promo. It should be selling on its own. Why you ain't do that at the radio station? <laughs> we went the whole discussion was about why men cheat. I was like, that's enough is. promo. I said it was Sister Soldier all over again because she inserted herself into that book and made herself a character and she was there entirely too long. Not, not giving, oh my goodness. What's that man's name? He didn't pass on. I forgot his name. Eric? For the uh, Marvel. Uh, For what? <laughs> For Marvel. Oh, uh, oh, Stanley. Yes, but he did it cute. That was tasteful. Mark, See, that I, was a that was a nice cameo for people who wanted it. This was, oh, y'all buy my other book while y'all reading this one. Yeah, because even like other authors, they'll throw a book in there or they'll throw like a title or something, but they won't really. But he did that a couple of times. Like he threw in a couple of authors' names. He threw in Ely, um, Elan Harris. I forgot what other ones he threw in, but. I don't know. I guess so. It was so apparent that he was plugging himself. He said, I'm going to plug a few other people. 